Welcome to Let Off Shots Films, man. We got the infamous Marty J in the building. What it do, fool? What is it, man? Got it, man. Oh, man, you know, just holding it down. What's the word? So to the people that are unfamiliar with you, let them know where you're from. And can you let the people know what it was like growing up in Richmond, California? And how is Richmond different from other cities in the Bay Area? So I just say it's different because when you say a city, I think like San Francisco, you feel me? I think like Oakland and shit. Like, you feel me? Like, those are, are big cities. You feel me? Those are actual cities, my nigga. Like, but when you talk like Richmond, like, I don't even look at Richmond like a city. I look at it like it's a little ass town. You feel me? Because it's just hella small. Like, it's hella small, you feel me? So I just, I, just, I just feel like, you feel me, it's really much more of a town than it is a city. But hey, I mean, everybody got their own opinion about that shit, though. But that's, that's, that's how, that's how, that's the only thing I think is really, really just different from any other city. So we all, we all got the same culture, you feel me? We all be talking the same way, walking the same way, and all the extra shit, you feel me? It's all the same shit going on everywhere, no matter if you're in the North Bay or if you're in the East Bay. It's the same shit. Tell us about your upbringing and who was Marty growing up. Me, I grew up like kind of like I was always a good kid and shit. I was smart. I always could do the work in school and all this shit. It's just, it's just, I chose a whole different route. Like you feel me? Really, I lost it after my folks died and shit. And after my folks got killed, after that, you feel me? I just went head first into a whole different life. So you feel me? And I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of niggas out there you feel me that can say the same shit that they was always raw in basketball or raw at football you feel me or actually could go somewhere with music or go do something else you feel me but this is just how their life ended up because it's going to be the worst mistake that that they ever made really really it's just like the worst mistake they ended up making the worst mistake and fuck their life up bro and it just is what it is you feel me it ended up how it ended up but I mean shit all I can do is just look ahead at the future you feel me, and make the future better for myself. That's it. And what was the reasoning for your family transitioning to Fairfield? I mean, as y'all know, you feel me, it, it's, you feel me, in Richmond, for me, it get, it get real greasy. I mean, it get real greasy, but like, I was like, getting into hella shit, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was a young nigga, like 14 and shit, doing hella shit, 15 and shit, 16, doing hella shit. And all that shit was coming back, you feel me? It was coming back even at my family and shit, so my family was, like, on some shit, like, you know what? Like, man, they was already kind of, like, thinking, like, you know what? We need to get up out of here, like, type shit, like, you feel me? Even though when we left, I still was, like, the one that only one I was really going back. Me and my brother was really, to be honest, like, we were still going back. So even leaving didn't really even do nothing. That, that shit didn't do nothing. We were still going back, but, like... Really, the transition, I got kicked out of every school district, bro. I mean, every school district, bro. Every school district, bro. So I had no choice but to enroll into a school out there, you feel me? Way out there in the North Bay and shit. So I had no choice, you feel me? And that's just how I ended up on that side of the fence, really. So Fairfield was kind of like your last resort. Yeah, hell yeah, that was my last resort, bro. If I had a choice, I would have never even... I would have never even went out there, you feel me? Like, I was young, you know, I was 16, so you know, I, I ain't really had no choice. You ain't really got no choice when you're that age. But, like, 
If I had a choice, bro, I would have never eaten in the house. Never, ever, 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 ever went out there, bro. Because just, not to say it's not cool out there. It's cool out there. You feel me? It's, it's, trust me, it's way better than being in Richmond for sure. But I just, just me, just knowing myself, I wouldn't have wanted to even go. You feel me? I didn't want to go as it, as it was. You know, back then, I didn't want to go. So, you feel me? But hey, it just ended up happening. How it happened. You feel me? I mean, shit, life could have ended up worse, really. So what type of student was you in school and were you involved in sports? I was, I was, I was, I was like the nigga that was getting there like class clown, making everybody laugh. I was the nigga that just like loved to be in every bitch face, making them smile and shit and do all the shit. But, like I knew how to do the work. I was getting bad grades and shit, you know, carrying guns, running around, running the streets and shit, doing all the shit. But I'm going to be real, I, I, I could have did the work. It, it wasn't like I didn't know how to do it. It's just that I just chose not to do it, you feel me? I chose to be out of class and chose to be skipping school and shit like that. Like, you feel me? It's a lot of people that actually do that shit, and it's because they don't know how to do the work. I can say for myself, like, I really actually know how to do that shit, and I could have did it if I wanted to do it. It's just that I didn't want to do it, so I chose not to do it. So when did you first get involved with the streets? One of my loved ones ended up passing away, and, and every since then, it was just like, it was caught up, you feel me? We was all young niggas, though. Like, that's crazy. Like, we was standing there in middle school, going into high school. Like, you feel me? We was all young niggas. And at first, we used to just fight a lot. It was a bunch of fighting going on, a bunch of fighting. But we already know how that shit was. That shit was so weak. Eventually, somebody ended up getting shot. Somebody ended up getting killed. Little shit like that, like, and, and that's just what transpired. And after that, you feel me? Niggas start picking them up other the guys. So, how did you get introduced to 600? Yeah, yeah, bro. When I moved out there, bro, I was like, you feel me? I moved out there and I first started going to school out there, bro. I, I was like, I was a big loner, you feel me? If you wasn't a bitch, you couldn't even get close to me, like, because I was a loner and shit, but. I had went to these niggas' hood one day, and I seen a couple of my niggas in there type shit, you feel me? And I was asking the niggas, like, what the fuck the niggas doing over here? And because I was going to go see a bitch in their little apartments or whatever, and nigga, I would see my niggas. I'm like, what y'all niggas doing over here? They're like, man, it's like, nigga, we, we be over here. We be, you feel me? We be trapping out here and hell of shit. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, nigga, I end up seeing these niggas. And I'm like, nigga, what these niggas doing in here? Like, you might go to school with these niggas. Like, who are these niggas? Like, what these niggas doing in here? They like, they like, them, them the little niggas. Like, so we fuck with them little niggas. They smooth. You feel me? So once I seen my niggas was fucking with them niggas, I'm like, okay, it's cool. It wasn't like, oh, no, okay, I'm running the streets with these niggas and nothing like that. It was just like, all right, they cool. You feel me? I go to school with these niggas. So I be around these niggas. All right, smooth. You feel me? I mean, who is this fucking bitches doing other shit? And that, that's all it was. You feel me? That's how I ended up meeting them niggas, though. So can you tell us a few things that you and the other 600 members used to do for fun? Shit, we, we used to fuck bitches. We used to go around all the bitches, like little pool parties and shit. And we used to go dip and shit, do all types of shit, go to the city and try to get some money and shit, like attend like house parties and shit on the weekends and shit. We used to be having a hell of a little fun and shit. Like, I mean, we was having fun, though. I mean, that's, that, that's really what we was doing, you feel me? All the other shit, that it wasn't, niggas wasn't on that, like, you feel me? That shit wasn't even transpiring yet, like, you feel me? That shit, that's, none of that shit even existed, bro. Like, you know, we, was, we was kids, just having fun, that's all it was. What does 600 mean to you? That shit mean to me, that shit mean everything to me, bro. I look at that shit like, like how I look at my mama, you feel me? Like, you know, that shit, that's family, that's my, they're my brothers forever, for hell. For the rest of my life, they're my brothers. I love them niggas. You feel me? I do anything for them niggas. My thugs. It's the same shit, vice versa. You feel me? It's family. That's all it is. It's your family. What's your connection with Lil ZNT? I got a lot of family members and shit. That's a part of that shit. You feel me? You know what I mean? Like, when I was out there, you feel me? You know, being from the hood and shit, like, you feel me? Them niggas always around and shit. It's a couple niggas from my hood that is little. You know you know, it's a lot of Southside niggas that's part of that shit. Like, you feel me? Like, Mr. Man, that's my cousin. You feel me? All the niggas, you feel me? Colonel and shit. All the niggas are my cousin and shit. Like, you feel me? But, like, 
and just family ties, you feel me? I got family ties to certain niggas and shit, you feel me? And I fuck with them, you feel me? On my L's and all they stay up, nigga. My God. Being that there are two 600s in Fairfield, how do you differentiate the two? I say, like, when it comes to the 600, like, these are the motherfuckers that I have around my family a lot. You feel me? Like, they really, like, tied in like we blood, for real. Littles is more like, that's more like, you feel me, like, okay, you know how a certain hood, like, all right, all right, it's, a, you, 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 it's like you not really in that shit, but it's like you, you kind of riding away with it because it's a lot of people from your hood that's, that's in that shit or they fuck with that shit, so it's like, I depreciate it, like, kind of like that, you feel me? Even though I still got the same fuck as the Littles, I still got the same shit going on as them. It's just, I depreciate it like that, bro. Like, like you feel me? Like, I'm not with the Littles every day. I'm not really with them every day. You feel me? I'm, I'm with the chicks every day. So it's like... You have 60 seconds remaining. That's how I kind of look at it. But it's certain niggas like, on oh, my mama, like, you feel me? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm tripping about for sure before. It's the same shit. For sure, for sure. If you ask me, like, I, I, as far as my feelings towards it, it's the same. You feel me? My feelings is the same. So, like... The only difference is, is for me, this is in Richmond, and then nigga, the other shit is in Fairfield. That's it. That's all. That, that, that's the only difference. So how did you start rapping? And do you remember one of the first songs you made? I started rapping as a young nigga. Like, if you go look on YouTube and you look up Richmond, California, Juneteenth performances and shit from way back in. 09 and shit, and oh, okay, I'm a real Richmond baby, bro. Everybody know that. You can ask any bitch out there. They know my name, full government, and all this shit, bro. They'll let you know. And I was on, so my brother was a rapper. You feel me? He used to travel around the whole California doing shows and shit. Like, you feel me? You can look now to this day on YouTube. Nigga, I was a little ass boy, young nigga on stage with my brother. You feel me? So, being around music and shit was always like around me, you feel me, as a kid. And it was just something that I knew that I always wanted to do. You feel me? Even as a kid, I knew it. And I knew I wanted to do that shit. You feel me? So that's how I started, like, you feel me, being interested in me with this period. You feel me? My uh, my first song that I ended up making, though, you feel me? Like, my first actual real song, not just all the shit that I didn't just hop on and record it and just was playing around. Like, uh, my real actual first song that I recorded when I was 15, you know, I was, I was 15 years old. I was about, nah, I was about 14. I was like 14, turning 16, you feel me? When I had recorded that thing. And, and, and everybody that know me, they know, they know that, they know the song that I'm talking about, you feel me? That's, it's that Marty J, I'm signing, you feel me? That shit on SoundCloud now to this day, you feel me? But, hell yeah, bro. Like, ah, that, that's when I really, really, really just start taking it serious. Like, you know what? I, I'm going to start doing this shit and I'm going to start making bangers for real. So why did you take your music down? And did they try to use your lyrics against you in court? I ain't gonna lie. They was trying to, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why the music came down, bro, is because that was in that motherfucker uh, captain talking about, nigga, I'm in the songs predicting everything about my case and, and hella shit like that, saying that, oh, I already knew that I was gonna go do something like this and hella shit. You feel me? And and the whole time I'm being, I'm like, damn, where the fuck is the word alleged at? Like, feel me? Y'all just saying, like, I'm guilty. Y'all saying this shit, like, I'm guilty or something. Like, like nigga, I didn't tell y'all that I did something. Like, feel me? Y'all just saying, taking my music and just saying, like, oh, he's saying it in the song. He did it out. But what about it being recorded literally months before this shit ever even happened, bro? You feel me? And I was like, bro, like, I'm, I was just like, damn, I was sitting there devastated, like, damn, like, what the fuck? Like, hey, really trying to do this shit? Like, you feel me? I said something in the song, bro, and I believe it was my song called Bounce Out, and, 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 and I had said, uh, what did I say? I'm gonna go over the lines. I referenced it for you, bro. I had said, nigga, nigga, uh, night time. Yeah, I'm thinking it's the right time. Love, big. I said, I said, I said, love. Wait, what would I say? I said, night time, y'all thinking it's the right time. Love, big, funny, but I ain't busting with no little nine. They showed that in court. And I was like, damn, like, why the fuck are y'all like, damn, like, what's going on? And she like, look, he's talking about guns, his favorite gun to carry and all this shit. And I'm like, damn, like, what's up? Like, what's up? Like, why is y'all trying to say all this shit? Like, and this shit is like way before the time. Like, you feel me? Like, 
way before this shit ever even really even went down. Like, you feel me? Like, this shit crazy, you feel me? And then, nigga, I said, nigga, uh, something about helicopters and hella shit being outside a nigga house and hella shit. And it's crazy. That shit ended up really happening. And they like, okay, we're going to use this in court and, and, and show them that he predicted all of this shit way before it even happened. Yeah, they was trying to yeah, they was trying to do a bunch of shit, bro. They was in that motherfucker talking like a motherfucker. Man, you know that's the judicial system, man. <laughs> They'll do whatever it takes to take a motherfucker down, lie on them, drag their name through the mud, all type of weird ass shit. So, you know. Any any of my positive songs, bro? They never even took the motherfuckers and showed them. I like y'all showing all the negative shit. I ain't gonna take the positive ones though and show a nigga with you feel me, show a nigga about that shit. They're like, yeah, yeah, man, they do. They just trying to paint a fucked up picture, fucked up image of a nigga. That's all it really was. You feel me? There ain't nothing though. So, how much unreleased music do you have? It's, it's a bunch. It's a bunch of it, but then it's like, you feel me, when I come home, I, I just be on some shit like, man, I'm something new. Everything new, you feel me, I'm saying? All the old shit that I recorded and all the old shit that's just sitting there, I might like keep that as like a compilation for like, I don't know, if I die or something, nigga, that, that motherfucker just, this is what's going you feel me, what everybody gonna hear if I die, it's just shit gonna drop, you feel me? Like, damn, oh, this is music way, way, way last long time ago. Like, way, it's some shit that we never even heard. Like, from way, way, way back then. Like, for me, that's, that's probably what I plan to do with that shit, even though I don't got plans on leaving this bitch no time soon. So, to all the ops, nigga, hey, 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 to all the ops, nigga, I better uh, take note of that, too, nigga. I don't got no time. I'll, I'll, hey, I don't plan on leaving this bitch no time soon, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> For so for so. Did six hundred twine have any unreleased music and are you featuring on them? No, for sure, bro got a lot of unreleased music and me and me and the thugs we talked about that shit hella hella much, you feel me? And I told the nigga for sure, like, man, like man, I wanna get a hold of a few tracks for sure for sure and just hop on so I can at least say I got some songs for my brother, like you feel me? So you feel me, like I mean we we gonna see it better later on though. We gonna make that shit happen though. But for sure, for sure, he got unreleased music. For sure, for sure. Like, all the verses and everything. Okay, okay. That's what's up. Who are your hip hop influences locally and internationally? As far as like my major artists that I, I'm influenced by, like I'm influenced by Drake. You feel me? Just because his consistency, you feel me? His consistency throughout all these years. You feel me? Like, like respect consistency, like nigga. It's just like you know he when he's not dropping music, you know he recording the shit, and you know it's something that's gonna come. Rather you gonna get an EP or you gonna get some singles or something that's gonna come hit for the summer or something like. You know you're gonna get something from Drake. You feel me? Like, cause that nigga just stay hella consistent. And then my second to be like Future or somebody because that really like kind of like taught me how to be kind of crafty and shit. And like now today he's kind of taught me how to be more craftier with my music and shit. And I, as a third pick, I say, I ain't gonna lie, more of an influencer, I say, uh, I know Brett just came out like a few years back, but like, I'm gonna say like, he, he is an influencer to me, that nigga Rod Wade, you feel me? It's because he, he really telling the truth, you feel me? I love niggas that, that be they self, bro, and just tell the truth, like, NBA young boy too, like, you feel me? He a nigga that just don't give a fuck about how the world look at him, you feel me? He gonna just be him, be himself. You feel me? I like that shit, you feel me? So, ah, that, that, that influenced me for sure, for sure. And then, as far as local artists and shit, like, I mean, uh, I say, local, I ain't really too much of a fan of no no local niggas like that. Like you feel I mean it's a it's a lot of niggas out there doing their thing and whatnot and I may hear some shit every now and then and be like, Oh, okay, that went crazy. But ain't nothing really just had me like, okay, hooked on the nigga music for real, for real, you feel me? Cause I, I like a certain type of style anyway, you feel me? Like where I'm from, everybody kinda like sound the same, you feel me, but I like other shit. I like kind of like that East Coast type shit, like that J.I. and Lil T.J. And, and Polo G. and all them niggas and Lil Durk and shit, bro. Like, I, 
I like a whole different type of wave. So I don't really, I don't really got, I'm not really too much of a fan of, well, I ain't gonna lie. My nigga Fredo Bass be tripping. I ain't gonna lie. My nigga, my case, I ain't gonna lie. nigga be tripping. I'm gonna be so real. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm a, he, he for show. Sure, I'll put him in the local favorite for sure. That nigga Fredo Bag. Okay. Do you get more love in Fairfield or hate? I feel like that's a that's like a question. A nigga can't really like borderline answer because I mean, in this world here, you're gonna have people that love you and then you're gonna have people that hate you. It's just gonna all matter it's all it's gonna all boil down to if you give a fuck or not. Me? I don't give a fuck about who hate me. Sometimes I don't even give a fuck about who love me. Cause sometimes, nigga, that, you feel me? Some people just don't love you the way you want them to love you, bro. So it's like, if you can't love me the way I want you to love me, nigga, I don't give a fuck about your love. You know I mean? But shit, I say it's a little bit of both. Like, you mean? Love and hate. I mean, shit. It don't really matter to me because I don't give a fuck about who love or hate me. I love myself. Yeah. So what are you charged with? Charged with second degree murder, you feel me? Facing 50 years, but I ended up taking a deal and shit. I ended up taking a deal and shit. I played out, you know, I played no contact for voluntary manslaughter. So, how was your support system during the court proceedings? My support system, yeah, my support system was always there. My support system still here now to this day. I mean, I mean, my niggas, they fuck with me, you me, my family. You feel me, certain little females and shit, they, they do their little shit, they do whatever they could at the moment that they could, you feel me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really stress nobody about it. You feel me? Motherfuckers take care of it. I mean, some people out every now and then offer me some shit. Like, man, you need this or you need that. Or are you good? Or are you good or not? But for me, a lot of people don't even understand. For me, it ain't even about the money, my nigga. Like, nigga, it's more, it's more of just being here, just checking up on a nigga. It ain't all in the hurt to just, you feel me, be like, oh, tell, give him my number, man. Just tell him to call me. And I'm I just wondering how he's doing. Like, you feel me? Well, you don't even gotta talk to me. All you gotta do is ask my people how I'm doing. Like, feel me? It just is feel good for to hear motherfuckers ask about a nigga and be like, you know what? Oh, what's the call? Ask how you was doing and do it. Do, 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 do. You feel me? All the extra shit. I mean, that, that's all that really counts. It's really the small things. Motherfuckers just think that a nigga trying to hide them. You feel me? Cashing out and shit, doing all the extra shit, running up a check and shit. And, oh, cash out and this, cash out and that. But it ain't even even about that, bro. It's just about. You feel me? Being present at the moment and, and, and a nigga hearing your voice and hearing you sincerely care about what's going on with a nigga for real. For sure. You know, that's all a motherfucker needs, especially when they down. So I totally agree with you, big yeah. dog. So you got to let the people know, man, who was all in your paperwork and who are some of the people that actually lied on you about this crime? I mean, I mean... It was a bunch of niggas, man. Some little nigga named Dejan, another nigga named, uh, they used to call him Christmas or some shit like that. And then, then it was another nigga named, uh, Thieves, but he ended up getting, getting bopped by the motherfucking police and shit out there. You feel me? I mean, shit. Uh, you feel me? My best friend, you feel me? He was my best friend for me at the time, you feel me? I mean, my nigga Meech, but he, he ended up, you feel me? lying on a nigga and whatnot, you feel me? And I think it was more just to get himself out of a situation that he didn't even know he wasn't even in, you feel me? You know I'm saying? He didn't even have to do that shit. He didn't have to say that shit because all them other niggas was already saying it. But, I mean, shit, it is what it is, you feel me? I mean, bro, like, I still love that nigga, but I don't really talk to him like that, but I guess it's just, that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you do just got to love a motherfucker from a distance, you feel me? Even if y'all don't talk all the time. So were you ever concerned for your family's safety because of these allegations? I mean, I ain't gonna lie and say that I never thought about it because everybody knew what my mama said. I'm not gonna ever say that. I, I you feel me? At cocky moments, I had cocky moments where I was like, you feel me? I like, niggas know what time it is. You feel me? And then I had my humble moments where I'm like, that don't mean nothing, you feel me? Because anybody could do this type of shit. Anybody could be on that type of shit, you feel me? So it's like, if a nigga really, if that shit really hurt a nigga enough, you feel me? A nigga that take it there, it's niggas out there that will. So you feel me? And yeah, sometimes it did cross my mind, like, you feel me? Just, I was just thinking about my family, and all I wanted them to do was just be okay. But I didn't really give a fuck about nothing else, you feel me? 
if my family and my brothers, I ain't care about nothing else. I mean, as long as I had them and they were still smooth and I could talk to them every day, and I was like, okay, are y'all good? So, I mean, as long as I could hear that they was good, you feel me? I felt good. I wasn't worried about nothing. So how are they treating you in jail? And what was your first week in the penitentiary like? Yeah, like, I mean, jail is jail, bro. Like, it's like a big-ass daycare for adults, bro. Like, niggas just sitting around doing nothing. I mean, really, if you really want to be real, it's like nothing, bro. It's like you're just sitting here wasting your fucking life, bro, wasting your time. You feel me? Like, that's how I feel. But as far as, like, my first week in jail, first week in prison, I mean, it, it wasn't bad or nothing like that, bro. It was just like, fuck, I'm here. Like, you feel me? That's how it really felt. Like, it just felt like, fuck, damn, bro, what the fuck am I doing right now? You feel me? I could really be somewhere, touching cheese the fuck up, you feel me? I mean, running my shit up, just somewhere, nigga, out of state somewhere, you feel me, on the road with it, like, you feel me? And I'm right here looking at these nobody ass niggas, I don't even know. Oops, my bad. I'm, I'm going to take that back. I ain't gonna say nobody ass niggas because I don't even know these niggas. You feel me? But I guess that's what I mean by nobody ass niggas. I, mean, I don't even know these niggas. You feel me? I've never seen them a day in my life. So it's like, ah, man, bro, I, I, I trade this shit in, bro, to go live a better life with school for school, bro. This shit ain't what it is. No money. So what does an average day look like for you? An average day, nigga, waking up, looking at these nobody ass niggas <laughs> every day. Washing my face. I'll tell you exactly how the day goes, bro. I wake up, bro. I get up, brush my teeth, wash my face. You feel me? Get ready to go. Eat this nasty ass food. Sometimes I don't even want to go. You feel me? But I just walk anyway. You feel me? Like, all right, whatever. You feel me? It's hella cold outside in the morning. And then niggas come back. And all the niggas do is be on the phone all day, nigga, or be on this dumb ass tablet right here. You feel me? Talking on the phone all day, nigga, or. Or a nigga listening to music, nigga, or watching some type of movie or something. Or we trying to stay away from these nobody ass niggas, bro. That's really what it that's really what it boils down to. That's how the nigga day go every day, bro. And it's a repeat same shit every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. You feel me? Some niggas don't even fuck the same bitch every day, bro. And let alone I gotta wake up and do the same shit every day, bro. Like that shit get irritating, but I mean shit, it's just I'm probably just going through this shit, you feel me, and I'm gonna go through it. And I, that's all I got. That's all I, I'm, I'm just going through this shit. That's all it is, bro. I'm just going through this shit. And it's just teaching me, you feel me, to not take life for granted. That's all it is, bro. But yeah, it's the same shit every day. Same routine every day. How many phases have you caught since you've been there? And that's one thing a nigga better know, bro. Yeah, this young shit, crazy shit. Oh, you're going to catch some phases. If you don't know how to fight, nigga, you're going to learn how to swim. <laughs> oh God, your ass gonna learn how to spend the day, nigga. Oh God. I mean, so I didn't, I didn't have a few though. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't have a few fights, like probably like three or four. Nah, I had three. I had three. I had three. Sure, for sure. Okay. For sure, for sure. And can you tell the people? Seconds remaining. Can you tell the people about a time when you seen a nigga turn it down? You see that a lot. You see that every day. You see me niggas arguing. He ain't really trying to do all that shit. It's weird though, because sometimes you got the nigga that's just pressuring the nigga that he knows is not going to do so, it. I mean, it's a bunch of fake shit going on, just like on the street, bro. A nigga know who he can do it to and who he can't do it to. It's the same thing, shit, bro. But yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't see a lot of niggas turning to me. Niggas say turning to me. Bro. A lot of niggas just turning to me. I'm not supposed to do that, but niggas, I'm going to do it. It, it is what it is, bro. I mean, that's him. That's his life. That's what he got to go home with. I'm not going home with a nigga talking about, oh, he turned the damn home. He turned his face. No, I'm not doing none of that shit, bro. I'm getting off, nigga. Can you tell us about the time when you ran into Kimbo and what took place? Yeah, man. You feel me? Man, yeah, bro, you feel me? You already know what it is. You feel me? It was just a little street shit going on. You feel me? We had to get that shit out the way. That's all it was, you feel me? It was just boys being men at the moment, you feel me? Trying to figure out how niggas can just call you this, you feel me? Because when you in jail, you feel me? You ain't got no choice but to be around a nigga. You ain't got no choice but to wake up to a nigga, all the extra shit. So it's like, you're not going to keep doing it over and over again, bro. A lot of niggas think 
Oh, I'm gonna just fight this nigga. I'm gonna do this. Nah, oh, I'm gonna roll this nigga. Well, not every nigga rolling it up, and not every nigga just gonna turn it down. Every nigga just gonna keep fighting. Some niggas, some niggas will keep fighting, bro. Every morning, nigga, they wake up, see they out, they just keep fighting, bro. A lot of niggas, they be on some shit like, man, we, we just gonna, we just gonna hit like once or twice, and then after that, you feel me, nigga? You going on about your life, I'm going about my life, and talk to your life out there, like, you feel me? That's, that's, that's really like what it was all really about. You feel me? It was just like, you know, some boys just, you know, making a man situation and turning that shit into, to something different. Like, all right, we just gonna get down. That's it. But like, bro, that's that straight up. Like, you just can't say to me, like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. You like, you know what you down for. You know what's going on. And, and bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I appreciate it, but I, I need that. Like, you know, if I can get that, I appreciate it. I'm like, it's good. <laughs> You feel me? It's good. So we went in there. We went two times. You feel me? And of course, I came out on top on both of them. But like, I still respect Bretto just for coming at me like that. Cause ain't none of his niggas ever came and asked me you no know, shit like that or early and asked for a face. None of that shit. A lot of niggas just play that shit cool. You feel me? Or, or play like they not involved. You feel me? Like, that shit, that's a nerd shit. You feel me? If you know it. Closed window, nigga, in this motherfucker, and air that motherfucker out, nigga. You know, can't just leave that motherfucker just cooped up in and be cooped up and just sitting there, you feel me, not getting no air. Air that shit out, nigga. Tripping, just air it out. That's all you gotta do. You can air the problems out, put it all on the table right now. <laughs> That's all that shit was, though. And then, no, I, I respect Brett up. Brett, Brett for self for self. Still might have a little bit to cut so can you tell us about prison politics as far as the race goes? Like, how does the blacks get along with the northern Mexicans and the southern Mexicans? And then how do the blacks get along with the white boys as far as when it comes to the prison politics? It's so real. Nah, it's, it's simple, though. Like, it's simple as fuck. I mean, it's, it will, though. It, it, makes you, it makes you racist. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not, I'm not really a... Like racist ass person, but this shit right here, it, it does. It makes you, it does psychologically sit to you where it has you feeling like times at times you are racist. So you feel me? I mean, it, it is. I mean, but other than that, like everybody, everybody get along as long as you don't do nothing wrong, don't do nothing weird. You feel me? You ain't got nothing to worry about when it comes like to like racism and shit, like. Everybody kind of mind their own business. That's how that shit works. Like, you mind my own and you live alone. That's it. You feel me? Don't get into no problems with these other races. Like, you own people and own debts and you just run up debts and shit. You feel me? That shit gets so ass fucked up with that. But, like, other than that, like, everything cool, though. You feel me? Until there's some type of tension or something's gonna go down. How do you feel about women being involved in niggas' politics? I feel like if she's smart enough, I mean, everybody's smart enough to know what they're doing. So you feel me? If she, if she on that shit, then she on that shit. You feel me? I can't, this is get shot all the time, so I can't really, I can't really like speak up for, for the ladies and be like, oh, I don't think she should be involved in this, and I don't think on that shit. She on that shit. She on that shit. You feel me? That's what she told me. That's just like us, niggas, niggas. Period. Men and wife. You feel me? We all had our own pussies and, and shit. We all made our bed, and niggas was lying in it. So that's the same shit for that bitch. You want to make that type of bed? Shit, let her lay in that motherfucker there. Oh God. How many people has passed away since you've been down? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I'm lost. How many? Five and counting. But when I got back, though, and I got to look at everything, it was people that were niggas gone and dead that I knew. I, I couldn't even imagine. I was just like, damn, nigga, shit didn't tell me about this one. What happened? Like, I mean, there's so many people that died when that COVID shit had up, so. I, I lost a lot of niggas, I ain't gonna lie. I lost a lot of niggas. She got a little bit of everybody though. Everybody done lost a lot of people when that COVID came around. 
What keeps you focused and looking forward to being on the outside? How did you feel when you finally got released from lockup after doing so long? What are your plans for the future once you are released again? Yeah, really, just get money, talk to these niggas bitches, and and take my ass in the studio twenty four seven. Just project after project after project, recording project after project. That's really my plan. I don't really, I don't really like focus on nothing else. Everything else played out. I just, I just played out. What's the first thing that you're gonna do once you get re-released? The first thing I'm gonna do. Somebody bitch gonna be lucky. I ain't gonna lie, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stuff my face in somebody pussy ass all the shit. This nigga's stupid, boy. Oh, this nigga crazy. I'm gonna leave this shit in here, too. I ain't even gonna edit this shit and be laughing this shit. This nigga funny as hell, All right, Marty, nigga. You're at me like, oh my God, I'm trying to be number one. Hold on. I gotta look at this nigga release game real fast. Hey, on my soul, nigga, you got a, you know, you got a strong fan base out here that really fuck with you, so you already know. But um, do you have any shout outs or a message that you want to send to the world? Yeah, man, look, man, yeah, shout out to God first and foremost for getting me through this little train wreck and letting me know you feel me. And all the strength really came from him now, you feel me? But uh, shout out to, you feel me, everybody that did me wrong. Me. They actually showed me what pain it felt like. I know what pain felt like. I know those 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 dark times and those dark moments and those feelings and shit. And I know what it feel like. I know what it looked like. So thank I want to thank them for taking me through all that shit. For spending all the years, it's making me way way better and way smarter. Making nigga make better choices and shit. Just period. You feel me? Even if you don't ever want to be in that position where you feel oblivion, where you just feel forgotten, you just feel like feeling like the world is against you. So I thank them for showing me those feelings. And then I thank my family for supporting me. Shout out to them. The whole way they supported me. Now my thugs, you think I love them niggas? You feel me? They send the LP state. You feel me? And my mama on this line. So like, I, 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 I love my niggas. You feel me? And they been here the whole time, so, so shout out to them niggas too. Nigga, uh, shit, nigga, and shout out you, niggas, for fucking with me, nigga. For sure, for sure. You know this. Oh, 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 and and shout out to whoever my future bitch gonna be when I bounce with body here too. Yeah, I know she out there somewhere with her badass. Well, that's it, Marty, man. I appreciate you for fucking with me, too, big dog. You know, this was a, you know, one of them ones, man. I had to reach out and, you know, I definitely do appreciate you. You know, when you come home, we turning up. We're going to do an in-person interview if you get enough time. If not, we eventually get to it. So, yeah. Yeah. sure, for sure. We out. We're gonna do all that shit.